So let's discuss a mysterious structure inside planet Earth. Something geologists discovered decades ago, but something that did not make sense at first. We're talking about the structures you see right here. These very large formations right above the core of planet Earth and sort of floating in the mantle. Here's actually a beautiful simulation kind of showing us what all of this might look like. And if you've been on the channel long enough, you probably already know exactly what this is. These are known as LLSVP, large low shear velocity provinces, representing a much denser region inside the planet, with the African and the Pacific LLSVP being the largest and the main provinces, extending for thousands of kilometers in every direction and at least thousand kilometers upwards. Intriguingly, many of these locations also seem to be very close to various hotspots, usually responsible for major volcanism. In other words, geologically speaking, these are some of the most important unusual features inside the planet. But the question is, of course, what are they? How did they get here? And is this something very common or something very rare? And I think something like two years ago, we've discussed this somewhat intriguing proposition that actually wasn't proven back then, that maybe, just maybe, this is actually a remnant of a planet. Specifically, a remnant from the collision 4.5 billion years ago that in essence formed modern Earth, while also forming the object around Earth. This is, of course, the origin story for our moon. And so, yeah. Hello, wonderful person. This is Anton. Let's discuss this new study once again, mostly because it has now been officially published in the Nature magazine. It now presents a lot more proof and very clearly states that there's a very, very, very high chance that LLSVPs are really the remnants of ancient Theia, the planet that collided with Proto-Earth in order to then create the Moon and the Earth we know today. But initially it was always believed that most of Theia very likely ended up inside the Moon, with maybe some of it mixing with the mantle of planet Earth and essentially becoming a kind of a well-mixed substance that would explain why the Earth and the Moon seem to have relatively similar composition and very similar isotopes, with a lot of simulations like this one also more or less proving the same. But the international team from China, US and UK have recently confirmed their initial assumption, more or less opposing this idea of homogeneous Earth or basically Theia and Earth being mixed into one single structure and also explaining a lot of other important features about our planet. First of all, we know that when this happened four and a half billion years ago, this actually sort of started the geological evolution of planet Earth. This enormous impact kick-started everything, while also changing the planet just enough to make it unique and to make it different from everything else. And a lot of this is possibly due to these unusual structures inside the planet. So where exactly did they come from? Well, initial explanations involved sinking continents that would eventually end up inside planet Earth, melting and forming these unusual thicker regions. And this might explain some of the features we see inside the planet, but not the most massive ones, and definitely not the densest ones. It would actually not make sense why some of them would be so dense that they actually sink to the bottom, because most of the continents, for the most part, have a relatively similar density. Yet both the African and the Pacific Ocean LLSVPs seem to be about 2 to maybe even 4% denser than the mantle of the planet. They seem to be very rich in iron which is why they sink and stay on the bottom right above the iron core. Some studies have also suggested that maybe this is just a slightly higher temperature spot or even some kind of a very thick magma ocean that formed over billions of years. And though these are also intriguing propositions, there is no explanation for the mechanism of how exactly all of this would form or why it would exist. For example, why did it form exactly in those two spots and not really in other spots around the planet? And so a much more intriguing proposition was in regards to this being leftovers from the collision that formed the Moon. And though before it was always assumed that a lot of Theia was actually present inside the Moon, making the Moon maybe a little bit more iron-rich and a little bit denser, a few recent observations and a few recent calculations kind of disagree with this. Especially because lunar rocks don't seem to be too different from the rocks on planet Earth. Now this is actually something that's going to be proven later on once scientists can collect more rocks from the Moon. So basically if a lot of them are denser, maybe the Moon is the leftover from Theia. But at least for now, it does not seem to be the case. The density of both objects seems to be relatively similar. And so here to come to a conclusion, 
Once again, the scientists ran very complex computer simulations. And really just to do one thing, observe the effects of this giant impact, focusing on how the material spreads across the planet and where it settles at the end. And well, in their simulations, they kind of managed to show exactly what they always believed. The spread of the material across the planet seems to indicate that following this very powerful impact, a large chunk of Theia, or even in this case, two chunks, are in essence going to create certain structures inside the planet, very likely somewhere on top, basically in the upper mantle, with the lower mantle remaining more or less solid and more or less untouched. But because a lot of these chunks were slightly more dense, approximately 2-3%, to with time they would stratify, with a lot of these chunks sinking to the bottom, at first forming smaller chunks of about maybe 10 to 20 kilometers across, but eventually accumulating into larger and larger objects. And after a few million years, very likely combining into these large objects we now see inside the planet. Basically representing about 2 to possibly 3% of the Earth's mass, and very likely representing a relatively large chunk from Theia itself. But more importantly, solving the mystery of LLSAPs, explaining these unusual geological formations and why they seem to be the center of a lot of volcanic activity, and I guess even more importantly, explaining why Earth is kind of unique. For example, as I mentioned in one of the previous videos, turns out that our planet, compared to for example Mars, has a dramatically higher number of various minerals. Earth has several thousand minerals on the surface, potentially the result of a lot of this mixing and interaction early on, which for example planet Mars does not have. In comparison, something like 150 minerals were discovered on Mars. That's dramatically lower. It also potentially presents us with a very important factor that made Earth the way it is. Essentially habitable, very active, and containing a variety of geological effects and geological structures inside the planet. At this point, it's a bit of a speculation, but it's also kind of implied that these events and these structures might have been responsible for a lot of early volcanism, a lot of early evolution of the planet, and even possibly plate tectonics. Or at least a major mixing of the entire mantle, and thus a much more enriched planetary surface after billions of years. And so there's actually a very high chance that this is something fundamental that needs to happen to a planet in order to create these geological differences and to even possibly form conditions for permanent life. At the least, it seems to explain why the planet seems to be so different, so unique, and very different from any other terrestrial planet in the solar system, or anything we've seen so far with various telescopes. And so for all we know, the presence of these unusual dense formations, resulting from the collision with another planet, may be the real reason why planet Earth is so strange, so different, and of course, is able to create creatures like us. And though at least for now it's still a bit of a hypothesis, there's maybe a way to test this in the future once the scientists are able to collect more rocks, the rocks from the moon, and then compare them to the ones from Earth. If the lunar density is higher than planet Earth, there's maybe a chance that this idea is incorrect. But assuming that all of the rocks studied in the future are going to have similar density to planet Earth, like they usually do right now, it would basically confirm that most of the lunar material must have been mixed with planet Earth and a large part of Theia potentially ended up inside the planet. And more importantly, if all of this is confirmed and if this is indeed what's happening here, it also implies that this is maybe a kind of a natural consequence when various planets collide around other star systems as well. These impacts are probably very common, as a matter of fact, we've just witnessed one not so long ago, you can learn more about this in the video in the description, and so it's quite possible that many of these planets actually end up having very similar structures inside, and this unusual planetary accretion possibly happens in many objects out there. And if so, this actually gives us a very high chance for maybe one day discovering yet another Earth. Or at least another planet with very active and very advanced geology on the surface, lots of minerals, lots of chemical processes on the surface, and thus maybe some kind of a unique life. But, at least for now, as of 2023, this is still going to be a hypothesis, just with even more evidence, more proof, and an extremely strong argument. But I guess until maybe a few years from now, we're not going to know any of this as a fact just yet. And so until future studies, check out some of the previous videos in the description, Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.